the session, everyone here in the room, also for those uh, live uh, following us, the live stream on, on LinkedIn. Well, my name is Vinicio. I'm an HP applications and food processing specialist at Hyperbaric. And today I am joined with uh, Hugh Reynolds, owner of Greek Lobster. Together we will be giving an overview of HP applications, advantages, benefits for the seafood industry with a special emphasis on lobster processing, our presentation entitled, Ditch the Shocking Knife, Use HPP. So let's get started. First, I just want to briefly introduce Hyperbaric. This is a Spanish-based company founded in 1999. Since 2005, we have become the leaders in terms of HP equipment supplying. More than 60% or, or more, 60% uh, or more of the equipment installed throughout the world are Hyperbaric. And uh, well, this is no coincidence. We invest uh, seven to ten percent of annual revenue in R and D activities every year, obviously to improve the reliability of our machines, and also well, R and D activities related to food processing to help our, our customers. So we have the headquarters at the Burgos, which is an hour about uh, two, uh, sorry, a city about two hours north of Madrid. We have an office in the USA and well, sales representative in Mexico. Singapore and uh, Australia. The HP technology, a brief introduction. So non-thermal food processing technology using cold water, 40 to 75 Fahrenheit uh, to raise pressure and well, basically extend the shelf life with minimal impact in the sensory and nutritional properties of foods. So just to give you a perspective of the amount of pressure that's being generated by some of our equipment, you visit us at our facilities in Miami, the pressure of the air that surrounds us, it's uh, of one bar or close to 15 PSI. Keeping up with the sea theme, well, if you dive into the Pacific Ocean, the Marina Trench, uh, the deepest point, uh, it will be approximately 10 kilometers, 36,000 feet beneath the sea. The pressure of the column above us will be of uh, uh, 1,000 bar or 15,000 PSI, close to that. And well, HP can take that uh, six times that depth if that would actually exist. 60 kilometers beneath the sea or close to 200,000 feet under the sea. So it's basically a bomb what we have in the facilities and not, uh, every, uh, not, every, not every supplier is capable of doing this reliably uh, like hyperbaric. So we will now play uh, a brief video to, to show how that process takes place in the, in the industrial scale. That's our 525 equipment. We will be opening the doors in order to see how the process takes place. It starts when you have the food package in the final product and loaded into those blue baskets. You can see how these blue baskets are pushing to the high pressure vessel, a big metal cylinder, which we will be displaced to be aligned with a, a big metal frame or joke. You close it on both ends with the plugs and you start pumping water in order to, to fill up uh, the vessel. You just place uh, this wedge in order to uh, keep the plugs in place when you before you start injecting the extra 15 water volume to raise pressure. And uh, well, it takes about uh, two to four minutes to three minutes to raise the pressure. And once you reach the 87,000 PSI or the target pressure level, that's when most lethal effects takes place. So you inactivate microorganisms, slow down enzyme, enzymes. You release pressure, which takes just a couple of seconds, and you retrieve your HPP product by inserting a new batch of often processed food on the opposite end. And again, just an overview, and here comes the, the HPP product. So that's our Hyperbaric 525 equipment. The number in blue over here will correspond to the capacity of the vessel in liters. And you can see that it goes away. Uh, well, this equipment has the capabilities in average to process 7,000 pounds per hour, uh, 3,000 kilograms or slightly above that. And it goes all the way down to our hyperbaric 55 and everything in between uh, in order to make sure that it meets your processing needs. So just the benefits of the HP technology, what it's being sought in multiple food sectors. Again, it's the only non-thermal processing technology that balances between processor needs, food safety, shelf of extension, along with consumer demands in terms of nutritional properties and the premium quality of foods. 
we'll be giving an overview of uh, commercial applications for the seafood sector. First, just let's see how the, the distribution in terms of the installed machines. You can see that most of them are installed for juice and beverage processing, corresponding to 25% of the, of the market. Plant-based fruits, veggies, well, it all started with the guacamole, diversified into multiple uh, dips, such as hummus, fresh salsas, well, now there's a plethora of plant-based uh, foods available in the market, complex foods. So we also have a participation for the meat industry, where outbreaks related to the and were common in the late 1990s, early 2000s. It was a big uh, crisis in the food uh, meat industry here in the USA. Well, basically, HP comes over and uh, eradicates these uh, listeriosis outbreaks related to, to, meat, uh, to meat products, ready to eat. There's the, well, recently, in recent years, there's also have been a high demand in terms of for raw uh, foods intended for the consumption of uh, companion animals. It can be uh, placed alongside the meat sector. We have the HP tolling in which companies basically acquire one of the largest equipment or several of the, the medium to large sized equipments and provide a service to small, medium enterprises uh, this is also a good strategy in order to recover the initial investment of the HP equipment, uh, lend uh, again, this extra capacity to other non-competitors within the business. And seafood, you can see it's kind of a small portion, but we shall see that this uh, have a pretty amazing and interesting applications. In terms of shift of extension, well, just an overview of uh, three to 30 times what you can actually achieve just by keeping that, that food refrigerated. Jumping into the seafood applications and what will be our focus for today's presentation. So we have the extraction of edible meat for crustaceans, bivalves, lobsters, oysters, uh, clams. Uh, we have a uh, ready to cook fish, uh, fish fillets. This uh, very slick presentation in which you have the pre-cooked octopus leg packaged in vacuum skin packaging, a rigid or semi rigid tray covered with a flexible film, and again, it's quite a sleek presentation. Smoked tuna, algae, wet salads, and, and dips. Uh, very complex ready to eat the uh, meat meals. If you haven't taken a look on this, it's available on the product showcase. It's uh, Fuchsia Foods, which uh, processes with one of our customers, Maryland, Maryland Packaging. And they have uh, the booth with uh, Reverence as well. And crab meat, you can also take a look into one of our customers, Seafers, which you apply HPP for safety and shelf life extension. So a case study, we jump uh, all over the way to Europe with a cod, which is a highly sought commodity over there, fresh cod. So yeah, they basically uh, fish or, or harvest the, the fish so in, in the sea. They salt it, heavily salted in order to make it available year round. And well, at uh, the time of consumption, well, it's way too much salt for us to take. So you need to kind of uh, immerse it in water, change water multiple times, which can be kind of a, an inconvenient uh, task. If you are not careful, then well, you take the risk of recontaminating with uh, pathogens uh, each time you change the water. So in this case, uh, Bacalaos Alcorta processes with one of our customers. Uh, they basically did this for the consumer. They desalted the cod and sold this. But it had a well 20 day shelf life. They needed to add chemical preservatives combined with modified atmosphere packaging. They learned about some research projects going on with HPP. And well, you can see it uh, doubles the shelf life, it gets rid of the modified atmosphere packaging, minimizes so it completely eliminates the chemical preservatives. And well, it gets from selling locally in Spain all the way to get into very competitive, very uh, stringent markets, which can be uh, such as the case of uh, Italy and France. And just a graphical comparison, what we just saw, uh, modified atmosphere packaging with the preservatives, 20 days, and you can see a notable decrease starting around day 10 in terms of the consumer acceptance, whereas the HPP remains fresh throughout the 40 days at least. <coughs> Well, it's not just the fillets, but other parts of the fish that they are commercializing as well. Uh, the back, the tails, carpaccio, uh, the jowls or cococha, which is a very uh, delicate and, and highly sought out dish over there in, in the Basque cuisine. We now get into the USA in Miami, Florida, or close by, we have a seafers. They uh, cook crab meat from Venezuela imported to the USA. 
and apply HPP for shelf of extension and well, minimize risk with Vibrio species, this year monocytogenous, 21 to 30 days for a drug that barely lasts, uh, I don't know, three to seven days in refrigeration. So three times at least the shelf of extension. Another of our customers, Sandwich Foods, located in Medina, Ohio. Uh, this uh, company has a long tradition, a family-owned company of uh, serving or having a business with food service regionally. And well, they have also developed their own uh, brands. First main in Delhi, Grandma's Recipe. In this first main in Delhi, you can actually see some seafood uh, dips with which you basically have uh, minced fish, uh, minced seafood, along with uh, mayonnaise uh, dressings. Get uh, not this case, but maybe other companies getting up to 90 days in refrigerated shelf life with the, with the HPP. And you can see over here with more uh, detail once you, if you request the presentation about their testimony, their words, how the HPP and non thermal technology and have the safety, the shelf life, and the freshness again. It's not our words, our customers. Another example you can see in this case, we have a quite a large, uh, rigid or semi-rigid trays with a, with a seafood dip. And again, just uh, an example. In this case, uh, pressure transmission is uniform, instantaneous. So that's a beauty because it really simplifies the process and you can have uh, any type of packaging, any shape or size, as long as it fits into, into the unit and it's plastic material. So more about the uh, uh, success of HP within the seafood industry prestigious uh, seafood excellent global awards so you know just the guy trying to sell the machine telling about the hpp benefits but really the experts over here in the field that have been recognizing hpp products for quite uh, some editions now now for the bivalve shocking we start with the shocking part for uh, well, bivalves so oysters mussels etc so anyone who has uh, been trying to do this at home well you can see it's uh, with time consuming, hazardous, you can actually pierce through your hand. It also takes some dexterity and well, over here with the HP, uh, you can basically minimize this. So just take a look at quick glance over here on the, on the image that the shell basically comes clean. So the slogan, empty shell, full satisfaction. I mean, again, it's quite, uh, quite easy to do this. We have a video available on our web for those, uh, if you want to scan uh, this QR code or follow this link, and those present here in the Seafood Expo that you can join the Oyster, the shocking session at two o'clock uh, that we are sponsoring, and well, you can take a look in the video before. So it is actually very, uh, again, quite easy for the meat to fall apart after the, the HPP, that well, you have uh, uh, basically some processors that use uh, rubber bands in order to prevent the meat from falling. From falling. <laughs> Actually, the gentleman over here can help uh, help you with uh, with that. It's a couple of hoods away from where we are located. So if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out. And on the right, well, you have the difference between the, uh, the knife shocking, which you can actually damage or pierce through the muscle, through the edible meat. And again, how clean it comes and easily with the HPP. Over here, we have an example for clams the unprocessed, and you can see that as you slightly start to raising pressure levels, 2,000 uh, bar, uh, 30,000 PSI over here, all the way to 4,000 bar or 60,000 PSI, that uh, you can start to see an increase in terms of the size of the, of the clam. It starts taking water within the muscle, within the tissue. Well, you can take this into advantage. If you add salt water, it diffuses and enhances uh, the flavor of the, of the bivalves. Uh, you can see that also as you start to increase the pressure level, that you expect a full release of the of the meat from the from the shell. <coughs> and well, this table just summarizes or exemplifies that this HP condition needs to be tuned down to the depending on the species, even in within the same species, the varieties or the regionality where you actually harvest the the oysters, the clams, etc. But it usually takes place between 2,000 to 4,000 bars and takes a couple of seconds, 45 to 90 seconds to, to perform this. So piercing your hand, damaging it with a knife, it's not the only risk. Actually, there's uh, also high risk because these uh, organisms feed by filtering water through themselves, so their body. So they basically get stuck with uh, well, bacteria, debris, 
and in particular concern in for the case of oysters there are yearly uh, outbreaks related to vibrio species so with HPP we not only minimize this risk it helps to <laughs> it helps to comply with uh, international interstate shelf sanitation standard uh, 3.5 log reduction or, or greater and again it also uh, gets uh, or helps you to minimize risk associated with other food or pathogens viruses such as hepatitis, uh, norovirus to some extent, uh, parasites such as anisakis, so it may, might not be the case for oysters, but for other fish species, that uh, they are all relatively sensitive to pressure. Others, well, such as Lyceria, B. coli, Salmonella, are more resistant to pressure, so you need to have a good handling and good initial quality for, for the oysters. Also of concern, well, Prosidium botulinum spores, so you can think of spores as a war bunker where bacteria hide and they basically survive HPP. The only way to eliminate this is well through uh, thermal sterilization, but well, you can always add uh, additional control measures to minimize uh, this risk. So we close up this section of the presentation, just again, an overview of how HPP will help you to uh, reduce for labor costs, improve the, the yield, recover 100% of the edible meats in this type of uh, organisms while minimizing the risk, extending shelf life. So shelf life would typically be, I don't know, uh, one through five days, seven days maybe, refrigeration. HP, you can get uh, tw 10 to 21 days usually, again, depending on the initial quality of the, of the product. Now we jump into crustacean shocking, shocking sorry. Uh, again, we start well, a couple of years ago, 2016, one of, uh, uh, of our customers got uh, this award for the processing of uh, fresh uh, crab meat. With the lobster, you can see, you can recover everything and by everything, even the non-edible part, uh, all the guts, but uh, again, it's quite, uh, quite amazing when you actually see it for the first time, one of my favorites. Uh, uh, experiments when doing uh, trials with, uh, with the customers. So as in the case of, uh, of the oysters, it takes between 2,000 to 4,000 bars in order to, to improve uh, the shocking conditions or achieve the frothing conditions. Well, you can have the raw, oil, raw lobster, sorry, refrigerated, frozen, and he will be talking a little bit more about it in this presentation. Now, well, we just have a case study performed by the University of Maine, in which they assess the quality of HPP lobsters. In this case, well, they prefer to do the, the shocking by, by blanching first in, in boiling water, and they remove the tails with a pair of scissors. Afterwards, well, they, in order to minimize any, any more variables or experiments. So they package these uh, tails into pouches, uh, then they went to the HPP with uh, 3,500 bars for uh, 10 minutes. And they also perform experiments with HPP followed by sous vide at 65 uh, Celsius for, for 10 minutes. So over here we have some data for uh, the HPP raw lobsters. Uh, well, uh, we are not, uh, or when you consume lobsters, there's uh, in general seafood, less connective tissue. It's more easy to digestible. That's why you feel less, less full when, uh, or, or after you consume seafood. But we're not the only ones that easily digest this. So, so it is the case of microorganisms, enzymes that might be present within the, within the lobster. So they can actually uh, degrade or start eating the protein and generate some unwanted compounds. That's what uh, the, the amine or the amines or total volatile nitrogen. It's a measurement for freshness of uh, seafood. And you can see well the overall this for this parameter the control it starts to grow badly after just a week, whereas the HPP just maintains this be below the freshness limit or what's uh, being set as the target limit for at least during 28 days. We dive more into more details for biogenic amines. Putrescin doesn't sound very good. Uh, Portrait cadaverin. It's the same thing. It's uh, actually cadaver, it's corpse in Spanish, so you can see that they can actually be related to very strong of others, non desirable others. Uh, so you can see again, HPP holds them within uh, non detectable levels or close to, whereas the others uh, grow quickly during storage. What does this mean in terms of uh, practical purposes? Well, you can see consumer rejection, 
or 90% rejection, 10% acceptance barely after seven days of storage. HPP, you remain over here, high uh, consumer ac acceptance, 70% rate, after, at least during uh, 28 days. So it was actually not these amines, but other of others uh, that have been produced by lactic acid bacteria during storage, what limited the shelf life. So HPP is not a sterilization technique, it's that cold pasteurization, if you want to call, call it that way. For conditions that are being used for shocking, you can slow down a little bit uh, this microbial growth, but they eventually will recover. And again, it's kind of a uh, kind of a short shelf life when you compare this for juices that can last, I don't know, 90, 120 days. But over here, well, it's a, it's a double shelf life, triple the shelf life. It's a beauty for the seafood industry, which time it's uh, of, const of constraint. And well, the conditions over here, 3,500 uh, bars, 350 megapascals over here are slightly above what you usually would apply in, in uh, industrial applications, but you can see that uh, there's already a, a color change, uh, or uh, you can slightly start to perceive this color change when you compare to that to the raw lobster. So at the end, well, lobster is intended to be consumed uh, cooked. That's why, well, the researchers performed the sous vide and made the comparisons with the HPP against the, the sous vide. There's also a little bit of increase of, uh, of lightness when compared to the only for the sous vide. But again, in terms of uh, sensory, uh, test that these uh, researchers perform at the university. Well, they determined that it's uh, texture and taste were actually uh, the most sought uh, attributes in terms of uh, sensory properties. Uh, and well, you can see over here that there's basically not uh, a difference between uh, HPP and sous vide against the, just the sous vide tails in terms of aroma, appearance, texture, flavor, overall uh, quality or or perception, and you can see the fulfillment. So HPP even has a slightly higher scores in some cases, such as the overall score and the expectation fulfillment. And well, this is because, well, the, there were a hundred panelists or a hundred people that participated as panelists. 43 of them uh, actually consumed uh, lobster tails in a consistent basis, which is over here at least once every two to three months. And if you, uh, they analyzed the data only for this group, and they actually found that it was uh, better, slightly better in terms of the HPP and, and the sous combination. So in terms of the juiciness, you can check out the references. They, they're just about right that it's uh, just the perfect uh, juiciness. It's scored equally more than 75% of consumers for both the sous and the HPP plus sous -vide. In terms of texture, that just about right was 50% for both treatments. And the differences were, well, over here you can see Subit was perceived as uh, tender, they were also soft and mushy, mushy, sorry, whereas the HPP was uh, firmer and still uh, still tender. So uh, what does it mean? It's highly acceptable and, well, in this case, when the product is cooked, you would not expect this to be mushy or, or soft. So in this case, it highlights the advantages of the HPP for lobster processing. So this is uh, uh, all by myself. I will, Hugh will be joining shortly, but just uh, telling you that we hyperbaric applications team are at your service. So we provide any technical support related to food processing, packaging, regulations, any trials that you want to perform. You are free to welcome us at the uh, headquarters of Spain, our office here in Miami, for you to visit our incubator. So we have a basic kitchen appliances, sorry for you to prepare foods on site, or if prepared, you can just ship overnight. We process them as soon as we receive them and ship them back to you along with a, with a report. So again, here's a, a code, and if you want to follow the link also to see our HP incubator videos, it's also available on our website through the HP Innovation Week section. So again, my name is Vinicio, here's my email address or the marketing, and I will be glad to answer any questions at the end of uh, Hugh's presentation. Thank you for your attention.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hugh Reynolds. I'm the owner of uh, Greenhead Lobster. Uh, we were a, a family-owned uh, lobster company in Stonington, Maine, which is the largest fishing port in uh, North America for lobster. Um, almost, in, uh, we're an island community of about 4,000 <clears throat> 4, people, and uh, we're about 20% uh, of the North American, I mean, excuse me, of the Maine catch is landed in the town of Stonington. Our core uh, competency has always been live lobster. We, uh, we've always taken great pride in, the, in, the, um, in our Stonington lobster, knowing its origin. We feel be <clears throat> because of the, uh, our environment and where we are in Maine that we, we have some of the top quality lobster products. Um, about three or four years ago, we uh, decided that we really wanted to do the bring this quality live, I mean, the quality live lobster experience that you have when you come to Stonington and you eat it right on the docks and bring that to a, uh, a <clears throat> excuse me, a consumer ready product. But we, uh, so we did a lot of sampling and we looked at frozen lobster tails, cooked lobster meat. And, uh, you know, we we're just like, this isn't like eating lobster in the summer. We want to recreate that fresh experience in a frozen or processed form. Um, <clears throat> and one of my, my, my first really thing that grabbed me when I was eating frozen lobster tails was the meat stuck to the shell when you're eating it. So you pay a lot of money and you uh, get a lobster tail and you're going back in there trying to get get the rest of the meat off there and scrape it off. So I was like, that, that's not good. I mean, that doesn't happen when you eat fresh lobster. So lo and behold, I discovered, we discovered, um, let's just go forward. So, yeah, was, uh, uh, we heard of HPP. So hmm, HPP lobster tails. Well, what does that mean? Uh, well, we we uh, we went out and sampled it immediately. Before uh, the first thing I noticed is after you cook it, you just pull the whole, the meat comes right out. Um, it doesn't stick to the shell. So we actually started selling a consumer brand of lobster tails, and our slogan was, "It's not how much lobster you get to buy; it's how much you get to eat." Um, so not only, so that was the first benefit of HPP that, that we saw. And then, then we really, we started to combine like the good quality of lobster with HPP. We noticed that it, the, the flavor preservation was there. Um, it's very similar, it mirrored the live lobster that we were uh, so proud of selling. Um, why is that? Uh, well, I think he mentioned it at neutral when you, uh, we, begin our process or unique that we begin our process with the HPP. We put the entire lobster through the uh, HPP. So then we have the versatility, but that process of putting it under pressure instantly, uh, neutralizing the microbial activity really preserves the flavor. It's uh, sort of like similar to the Japanese uh, uh, attitude towards Wagyu, Wagyu beef. Um, it limits the stress and uh, that instant hit with pressure uh, preserves the flavor. Um, and then the, uh, the other thing that really struck out to me uh, about HPP was the chef could cook with raw meat. So we had a benefit dinner in Deer Isle. And it was Thomas Keller from the uh, French Laundry was cooking for a, uh, a benefit for our school. And I looked at some fishermen's wives there. Uh, there I was like, you know, I, th I bet you this is going to be the best lobster we've ever had in our lives. They're like, what? The guy from California is going to know how to do it better than us. And it was. It was butter poached lobster. But he had gone through this miserable process of putting uh, vinegar and parboiling it. And, you know, he had this uh, intense process to uh, get the meat out raw. It's like, wow, if we could give this product in this form and let the chef create their own recipe, put their own signature on this lobster, this is a, this is a tremendous opportunity. So at that point, um, it's okay, okay. So definitely I was sold that HPP as far as from the consumer eating experience was was a no-brainer. Um, easy, you know, easily removes from the shell, preserves the flavor, or you can take it out raw and cook it with whatever, whatever recipe you want. So then we started talking to uh, the HPP suppliers about, you know, what do we do and what are the benefits? And then the up, all the... Um, other benefits started appearing. So not only did we get consumer products, but we got ease of processing. Um, much easier process when you have that cartilage detachment 
and it goes right into the butchering line. The lobster has already been killed. And to pull it apart in parts and pieces is much easier. Um, and then extraction is much, much easier, um, especially in the raw. It's unbelievable the yield and the productivity you can get out of raw extraction. Um, and uh, so the, the, those those were uh, those were uh, immediate benefits. Um, we also go farther down the food process. We have a cooked uh, lobster line. Again, easier to extract when it comes out in the RTE room, but also we can use the hyperbaric and a 10K OTR bag and uh, extend shelf life. We uh, right now are validated for 21 days. Um, fresh lobster meat has always been a pretty, uh, you know, five, six, seven day in, in New England. It's a very popular product during the summer months. So that's uh, been a tremendous help. Again, it's uh, because of it's non-thermal and the pressure, there's no, uh, you don't, you don't compromise any of the flavor of the cooked lobster meat. Um, and I think really, you know, by starting the process, we get raw, we get, uh, we can do so much with the lobster now when we start the process with HPP. We can roll the legs raw, we can cook, we can cook the legs, we can, um, you know, body the, the mint as it goes through a, a, a bone separator. Um, for the bodies, the, uh, the yield is much better. Um, we can uh, do raw claws, we can do cooked claws. Uh, obviously, the raw tails from the consumer, they clean easier after HPP. Um, and and, uh, and uh, we can either we can cook those or, again, take them out raw, leave them in the shell. We can do whatever. We can go do it any, any way we want when we start the process with HPP. Um, the, but, again, it really comes down to not only is the benefits of processing, but it's really all about having the consumer experience. Um, you know, flavor preservation and easily removing from the shell. I mean, that's to me, that was the thing that really jumped out. Why I jumped into uh, HPP was to create a consumer experience that here the uh, fresh lobster. And uh, let's see what else do we have here. Let me see. Uh, talk about products here. Talk about some of the products. Sorry, <laughs> I lost the. Uh, I didn't know if I can fix it. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> this is the video. Yeah, I'll just give you show you a little video of uh, when Hyperbaric came there. But came up uh, this January, which guys come to Maine in the summer, don't come in January again. Uh, What's that? You have your own Yeah. Uh, 
you know, I'd like to add that that is important because <clears throat> it's a daunting machine and these guys, uh, that it's our whole process. So if we can't get the lobsters through the HPP, we can't, uh, our day does not begin. So, um, you know, there's a lot of around the clock, uh, calls over to Spain. They're, they're very helpful. Um, our mechanic, it's like, you know, driving a car for them now, uh, driving this HPP. So that, that has been great. Um, that, uh, I have to say you guys have been done a great job keeping those machines working and, you know, whatever hour of the night or whatever it is with maintenance crews, uh, we go, you know, I don't think that's important. That's why I think a lot of people are, 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 are like I was, I was criticized quite a bit for putting it in the beginning of our process line. To me, it was very important to create the quality products. But, you know, the common question we got was, what are you going to do if that you have, you know, 30, 40,000 pounds of lobster and your machine doesn't work and you're dependent on that? Well, fortunately, we haven't had that problem. So <laughs> we, uh, we get it to work. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, these guys are always ready to dial in and know exactly if something's off a little bit. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, if I can answer any questions about anybody who's thinking of buying HBP, I, I fully recommend it to me. I think it is the future for ease of extraction, uh, flavor pres preservation, and just really quality seafood uh, products. Um, to me, HBP is a, a no brainer. Future. Is there a demonstration here on the machine? No. And we have the, uh, the shocking competition at 2 o'clock. There's that shocking competition at 2 o'clock. We will be presenting the video and the machine is going to be a little bit uh, heavy to transport. Uh, <laughs> the competition or is it shocking? Uh, uh, is that here? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it works really well. We've done some experiments with shellfish. And that, that, that is unbelievable. <laughs> Question on the uh, taste outcomes for the refrigerated and unfrozen product. Do you see a difference, say, after two weeks of refrigerated storage between shell on, shell off, and the either impermeable bag, the impermeable bags of the 10 KOT with the option? After how long was it? Like, say, two weeks. Can you tell? Two weeks now. So, literally, if you did all four of those categories, double blind taste tests, that you personally would not be able to No. So, what's the advantage of the impermeable bag? Oh, it's, it's, uh, doesn't. Just it reduces the risk of seep. So if it overheats, uh, if it over, uh, like if you leave it, if someone like leaves it out um, out of refrigeration, it overheats. Yeah, it's a seep bot. Yeah, yeah. It mitigate, mitigates the risk for seep bot. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's a lot of all fish products. I'm mostly so going for fresh and OTR, but um, yeah, there's a lot of innovative packaging you can do. I mean, final product packaging we have. A, done a lot of that, but there's still certainly more you can do there with the uh, running the 87,000 PSI and using it as a uh, kill step. And, yep. How long have you been using this? Uh, we're, going, we're going to start our fourth year. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you just have to really, you have to understand we built our whole plant around the throughput of the uh, HPP so the HPP has X amount of capacity so we put all of our other machinery and equipment to bear in the HPP yeah yeah and it was all based around the HPP everything we did the HPP can do this much this hour I mean for us it was you know more about um, really making high quality products rather than massive throughput so some of the bigger uh, processors up north won't do this because they can't get the, the lobsters through the HPP fast enough. So they, they bypass the HPP. For me, it was more about optimizing the quality for what lobsters we had. Um, yeah, couldn't be any happier with it. Very glad I did it. Um, no brainer. So if there any other questions about HPP? Yeah. You took You do, yeah. That's one thing because even after that's another. He just did that uh, in the raw lobster, and that's real. That's important for people who uh, buy our gas froze after we uh, HPP the, the lobster, then we butcher them, we we freeze the um, do IQF lobster tails, and then nitrogen freeze them. 
And that's important because after they thaw out, the, uh, the end user has a longer shelf life because that's common a problem with you know chefs or home home consumers who you know buy a frozen product, let it thaw out, and then let it sit for too long. But our, our the HPP lobster tail holds up very well. That's another benefit. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what I've got all the benefits here. <laughs> I know there's a lot. I mean, it certainly, it was definitely quality, ease of process, and of course yield I mean, because of the three core benefits. But quality is really to make. It was really the driver to, to uh, you know, commit to HPP processing was to create the quality product uh, in, in the end. That's something you would be very happy about. And it's great because when you do taste tests, it's, you don't even, don't even worry about it. You're like, oh boy, I don't know if this is the other bit. If it's not HPP, it's it's a no-brainer. You know, on the shelf, like, so handling live lobsters, uh, it's always uh, more challenging in terms of right. costs. It's a lot of logistics over here. It's in the shelf life. And very convenient for us, for consumers. When you were, when you decided to go with the, you just walked us through your thought process and brought you behind the Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, yeah. I mean, I uh, was going to go, I met these guys the last minute. I was with JBT um, and I started designing the plant. They started talking, they uh, talked to me. They say, they, they, uh, they threw me off on the, um, throughput so they told me it was more throughput than whatever so i called up hyperbaric and they're like i don't know what your throughput is i'll ship you some boxes and you fill up the cans and you tell me what it is so i'm like oh geez why didn't i do that <laughs> i should have done that a while ago so uh they back and it was i mean uh, they were way off on what we thought we could do with throughput which is a problem because i was already starting to design other aspects of the plan um these then i went down visited in miami and uh I just got, you know, they're a, they're a, they're a family owned business. So, you know, I, I just got a better feeling from Michael Barrett. They're hands on. Um, yeah, you know, I met the owner um, when I went to Burgos and did some training on the machine. Great guy, uh, um, great team. So, I'm very happy to be with Hyperbaric. Uh, I did do the, it, was a long, long process of interviews and, you know, going down and they're, you know, they let you do the research and test your products and, do yield tests and uh, you know there was it was definitely a long drawn out process but in the end very very glad of um, the type of America. and then you can also you do interviews because it's you know it's a big investment but you can you can call up all the JBT users call the hyperbaric users I would recommend doing that throughout the country and in the different applications. There is. Isn't there? Yeah, it's fresh and Yeah. We don't, uh, you know, you just have to, like, we would, we, we won't, we're looking at shellfish, uh, mussels, and oysters for our off season lobster. That, that, that's a really good opportunity for HPP, especially with the labor's cost now. And, and, uh, and you know, and knocking down Fibrio and getting extended shelf life on oysters. And, you know, I think the uh, I don't think I think that the drive for consumer food safety is just going to continue and continue. I was just going to say if anyone has any questions, go over at booth number twenty seven four. There's a few booths here at booth number two zero three three. Awesome. Yeah, so you want to check out our HP? We got our HPP lobster products down there. So please go and visit. Thank you.